What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for October 13th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Sunday edition, an Eagles game day edition. They are finally back. Hopefully going to make us forget about the Phillies. Let's start with a little bit of housekeeping. Be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont, Twitter, and TikTok. On Instagram, at Philly Jimbo. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. That's where where you need to be. All the good stuff is there. Spread the word as well. If you're enjoying it, likely somebody else will. And that's how we're really going to grow this thing. So spread the word. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on all the social media. Any information you need regarding the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is in the description. Great class this year. And we're going to start uh, focusing on that here in a couple weeks. Recapping yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, are you going to watch more Flyers hockey this year? 73% of you said, yes, you will. They are going to be fun. It's going to be a great season. I even had a Philly fan from Utah checking in, trying to figure out how to get the Flyers out in Utah. Now that Utah has a team, it might be a little bit more difficult. But thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. It's Eagles game day, so we'll have your predictions later in the show. Speaking of those Flyers, first loss of the season last night out in Calgary, 6-3. Tough one, but Travis Konechny had two goals. Matt Vay Mishkoff got his first NHL point with an assist. Uh, and it was a rough night for Ivan Fedotov. And I don't know if it is going to be a uh, platoon situation for the goalies. Uh, but if it is and they're trying to figure out who's going to stand out, first round goes to Arison. They're back at it on Tuesday out in Edmonton, but one and one to start the season split out in Canada, Western Canada. That's okay. Sixers got blown out by the Celtics last night in preseason action, but no Paul George, no Tyrese Maxey. It was a lot of the young guys playing, and Jared McCain did score 20, but shot got that on 42%. Good experience for those young guys, though, and they are back at it tomorrow in Atlanta. Be sure to check out my boys over at the Clash and Conferences podcast. Good stuff going on. If you have some time this morning, the football one is outstanding this week. Uh, but they're available wherever you get your podcast as well as on YouTube. And then go check out Philly Goat. I know we're disappointed with Red October, but they have you covered for Eagles, Sixers, and Flyers. Go check out their selection. I mean, they have always coming out with something new. And there is always something for everyone in your family. So go to phillygoat.com. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery to take 10% off of your order. Do have a little bit of Phillies news. And with the Cleveland Guardians knocking out the Detroit Tigers and moving on, Phillies were the only team that had the bye that did not move on. Not necessarily the distinction that you want, but that officially, hopefully, puts the to bed the whole the bye and having time off and all of that. Hopefully, that puts that to rest. Not that the Phillies have used that excuse to their credit, but year three of the bye, and it seems as though that's no, no longer an excuse. So, not the stat I really wanted to hear today, but an interesting stat nonetheless. Some good news, though. Andrew Painter did pitch last night out in the Arizona League. Pitched two innings. He was hitting uh, high 90s. I think he got to 100 a couple times. Wasn't too bad. Gave up a walk and a home run, but had a couple Ks. Looked good. I mean, and truthfully, I mean, that's going to be key, but we've seen this so many times. Doesn't matter if the offense isn't hitting, but it's one of those things, as Ruben Amaro used to say, you can never have too much pitching. And that would be a good addition to the Phillies bullpen or the uh, starting rotation next year. So Andrew Painter out in Arizona, finally back from that Tommy John surgery and looking good. Okay, it is Eagles game day. And as of this morning, when I logged on, the spread is down to eight and a half, the over under 44 and a half. Finally, Eagles football. Hopefully, like I said, this will take our minds off the disappointment. Uh, But they are healthy. They are fully healthy across the board. Sidney Brown will not be activated 
And I'm kind of wondering if this is sort of a trial run for some of those guys to see what they, if they're able to step up and really take a hold of a spot. But Sidney Brown, looking forward for him coming back. Just not this week. All right. Here are today's three keys to the game. And the Browns are terrible. Absolutely terrible. This There should be no reason why the Eagles lose this game, especially coming off a of bye, especially playing at home. Um, but typically when we say stuff like that, we know what happens. But uh, I, I'm feeling good about this game. And I think the first key is they have to get off to a fast start. They have not scored a point in the first quarter all season. The only team to do that. Uh, and they need to to get out early, put the pressure on the Browns, and play some of that old school from the Super Bowl years in 17 and 22 where the offense allowed your defense to be aggressive and took some of the pressure off of that, plus putting the pressure on the Browns, who are banged up. Deshaun Watson, I, I feel, is just he hasn't been the same since his suspension. I would love to see 14, 21 points or 20 – 14 or 21 points in this first quarter and really just jump out to the lead. Uh, it's not something they've done at all this season. It's something when that they're good, that's really what dictates the, the, game, the flow of the game for the defense. So let's jump on them early. I would love to win the toss, take the ball, and just go right down and score. I think uh, if they cannot score in the first quarter, one – you got to question the, the scripted plays that Kellen Moore and Nick Sirianni are coming up with. But even more importantly, this is going to be a close game then. So you need to get off to a fast start. Second key to the game is A.J. Brown. He just needs to be A.J. Brown. Uh, obviously, we saw that with him out, the offense missed him. Uh, it's just... Uh, opens things up for everybody else and everybody talks about Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, CD Lamb. And I, I, I put AJ Brown right up there with those guys. I mean, you see what he does when he's on the field and what he does for everyone else. Like you don't see CD Lamb opening things up for I don't even know who the Cowboys. I don't think they have a second receiver in Dallas. Maybe that's why. But I'm expecting AJ Brown to go for Four or five, six catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns. I think they're going to see a steady dose of him. Um, he's excited. He's pumped up. And really, uh, it, it was just the offense was stuck in neutral without him. So I expect it to be a wide open offensive game. I, I really do expect to see a lot of points. Uh, but AJ, go out and be AJ Brown. And then the final key, I, I think we could do this. This or uh, taking care of the ball could be interchangeable for every game uh, until we see it consistently. But the pass rush, they need to get pressure on Deshaun Watson. They need to make him uncomfortable and allow the the guys in the secondary to, to make plays and Zach Bond, N'Kobe Dean to make plays. And their offensive line is banged up. I need Jalen Carter to be a disruptor and be uh, an all-world player today. And I, it's possible. Like I'm not asking for anything that's out of the ordinary. We saw that. But I think the one of the keys is just getting a pass rush. They don't have to get sacks yet because we know the sacks are streaky. They come in bunches, as Jim Johnson used to say. But get pressure on him. And, and I've been saying this too. Guys on the outside, contain Push Sean back up toward the middle. Don't let him get out and and get some scrambles and runs that way. But I need to see a good pass rush for the Eagles. So the three keys to the game. Fast start. Get Give me 21 points in the first quarter, and the Eagles win this game. A.J. Brown just being A.J. Brown. And then pass rush. We need to get pressure on the Browns. All right, so we do have a wild card key to the game today. My wife is going down. She usually comes down to one game a year, give or take. She was down at the Buffalo game last year in the rain, and that was an exciting game. So she usually doesn't come down and uh, see many losses. I, I We couldn't think of any games that she's come down to that they've lost. Uh, so there's the, the, the fourth wild card key to the game there. So what are we doing with the pick? I think if they don't win this game, Heads are going to roll. I feel if they don't win this game big, you're still going to hear the calls for Nick Sirianni's job. 
I, and really, the mental state of the city right now after the Phillies debacle, yeah, we're excited about Mishkoff Mania. Yeah, we're excited about the Sixers. But the, the, the city needs this. And I worry for the mental state of the city, quite honestly, if the Eagles lose this game and they don't win it big. I think you need a big, large margin of victory here. Uh, I like what Jalen and Nick, they both said the same things during the bye week about talking with each other and having respect and being on the same page. I just wish it was in training camp. But hey, better late than never. Kind of get a chance for a fresh start here after the bye I think A.J. Brown comes in, and that's the piece that the offense has been missing since Green Bay. Um, and honestly, I may be setting myself up like I always do, drinking the, the green Kool-Aid, Lucy with the football, whatever analogy you want to do. But I like the Eagles, and I like the Eagles big this week. Uh, I expect a double-digit victory. I think they need a double-digit victory. And I will be disappointed if they don't have a double-digit di victory. But I, I think they come out and they roll. I think they get off to a fast start. And like I said, I like A.J. Brown for two touchdowns today. Uh, I would not be the least bit surprised if we see Kenny Two Gloves with mop-up duty middle of the fourth quarter. I would love to be beating the line to the subway to, to go. Uh, but yeah, Kenny Pickett in a good way. Mop-up duty, not because he, he, he has to. Um, so I'm taking the Eagles minus the eight and a half. I would take it at nine and a half. Honestly, I'd probably take it at ten and a half. I, I just think they win by two touchdowns easily today. That's what they need. That's what we're gonna see. So there's our official bet. We're two and two on the season, just like the Eagles. So let's get into the black here. Eagles, minus eight and a half. And also I like the over too. I, I think the Eagles put up 30 points themselves today. Uh, so I, I really like the over as well. Uh, who knows? I might be setting myself up, but Eagles minus eight and a half is our pick to today or for today. Let's go birds. All right. Today, we're going to go back to 1974. And on this day, in 1974, Eagles beat the Giants 35-7 at the vet. Roman Gabriel threw for two touchdowns, one of them going to Harold Carmichael, who had eight catches for 79 yards and that touchdown. Running back Tom Sullivan, though, was the star of the game Running in three touchdowns for the Eagles. The defense stepped up big, forced five turnovers as the Eagles improved to four and one. Unfortunately, that was the high point of the 1974 season. They would lose six straight before winning their last three to finish the season as seven and seven. This is two years pre Dick Vermeil. And some of those pieces were in place uh, for the Super Bowl run. Frank LeMaster. Uh, was in his rookie year. He was drafted. Bill Berge was there, uh, but it just was uh, they were fledgling. But seasons like this is what led to Dick Vermeil coming into and being the coach of the Eagles. So on this day in 1974, Eagles beat the Giants 35 to seven. That's what I need to see today. I need a 35 to seven win. Um, that wouldn't get us to the over. So maybe 38 to seven. I don't know. Either way, I need a big blowout like that. Uh, but th that's what I need. But that happened today. Roman Gabriel throwing for two touchdowns. Tom Sullivan running for three as the Eagles just rolled the Giants. But then it all rolled downhill for the Eagles after that. Finally today, our Red October great game in Philly's postseason history. Game four of the 2008 World Series. And everybody talks about game five because of the rain and playing it over the course of two days. But game four was such a huge moment in that series. Robin Roberts threw out the first pitch. Patty LaBelle sang the national anthem. And the Phillies were looking to take a commanding three games to one lead. Pat Burrow walked in J-Roll in the first. Uh, and then Pedro Feliz knocked in Chase Utley in the third. And it was kind of like, eh, all right, maybe they might nickel and dime then here. The Rays got one back in the fourth. And that's when the floodgates opened. Ryan Howard hit a three-run shot in the bottom of the fourth. The Rays battled back, got another run in the fifth. But then it was heavy B, Joe Blanton, with the home run to make it 6-2. to two. And if you remember watching that game, he absolutely <laughs> crushed that ball. He was the first pitcher since 1974 to hit a home run in the World Series. And he also was the last one to do it. It's something that we probably will never see unless we get a guy like Otani doing it. 
Uh, but Heavy B with the home run. Then Jason Worth added a two-run homer in the eighth. Then Ryan Howard added his own two-run homer in the eighth. And it just, the floodgates were open as the Phillies won it 10-2. to And we were all excited because we were on the brink of the World Series championship. Uh, Ryan Howard for the day went 3-4 for four with those 5 RBI. Jimmy Rollins had a day, 3-5, for five, 2 doubles and 3 run scores. And the offense just exploded. Joe Blanton did what he needed to do. Six innings pitch, gave up two run runs, seven Ks, and of course that monster blast that he hit to left field. Um, fun fact about this game, game three and game four. Game three ran late. I forget whether there was rain or it just went late. But game three and game four of the 2008 World Series both ended on the same day. So there's your little fun fact nugget of the game. And I never forget this game because we were trying to go to this game. We had Eagles-Falcons that day, uh, and we were just trying to pull the doubleheader. Could not get tickets to save our lives. Every every option we had fell through. Our security guy in the Eagles was also worked the first base gate over at Citizens Bank Park. Remember, we tried to tell him we'll give you $1,500 cash between three of us, which he didn't do. So... Could not pull off. It would have been a great game to be at, uh, especially because I believe the Eagles won that day against the Falcons. Uh, But it was not meant to be. Um, And then later on, talking with him, he said, what the hell was I thinking? I could have had $1,500 cash, and I know you guys wouldn't have sat down anyway. But needless to say, we watched it from the basement. But Game 4 of the 2008 World Series is today's Red October great game in Philly's postseason history. On this day in 1974, Eagles beat the Giants 35-7 at the uh, Vet. Two touchdown passes for Roman Gabriel, three rushing for Tom Sullivan, and then the wheels completely fell off for the Birds that year. Three keys to the game. Fast start, A.J. Brown, and the pass rush. I like the Eagles big. Take that as your official bet. Let me know what you think. You think I'm crazy? Am I drinking the Kool-Aid? 267-495-8531. That's back to the future voice and text line. Give me your predictions for today's game. Let me know who wins. Uh, Do you think the Eagles win? I think it's easily double-digit two touchdowns today. And I know with this team that they don't blow people out. I think that changes today. They roll this team. And we see Kenny Pickett midway through the fourth quarter. Uh, but 267-495-8531 to get your predictions for the game in. Cannot wait. Going to do some quick editing and start heading down. But this has been This Day in Philly Sports History for October 13th, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Sunday. And until next time, go Birds.